are calling the meeting to order at 7.06 p.m. Um, as you know, this we have a slightly new format, which we have to carry and modify going forward format, C-wise. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Hopefully it makes it a little friendlier, a little less fire squadish. Uh, Thanks, Jim. No, I appreciate it. <laughs> we like friendly. Um, uh, second order of business, uh, public comment. Any? Doesn't look like it. Um, great, moving on to the consent agenda. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda, which has six items on it? Um, are the minutes of the last meeting on the consent agenda? <coughs> The ones she sent late. The ones she sent late. I think so. Could we take those off the consent agenda? The June 26 minutes. I think there was a mistake in them. This is the June 20th. Um, you mean? Oh. June 20th. Yes, You're right. June 20th. Let me see. Motion to take them off the. I don't think so. But no, just a request. I think just a request. Okay. So we will take those off for discussion. So a motion to approve the consent agenda with that removal. So moved. Second? Aye. Second. Uh, all those in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Any opposed? On the June 26 minutes in paragraph, or June 20 minutes, I'm sorry, in paragraph five, um, there's a statement about uh, seven lines down. Principal McRaith proposed that the Black Lives Matter flag remain up until an equity policy is in place, and then it says motion carried unanimously. I think that's a mistake because it, then it says Steve moved and there was a motion that was adopted, and that motion carried unanimously. Mike did not make a motion. So that first, the first motion carried unanimously should come out. So that's my motion to amend the. June 20th minutes in paragraph five by removing the first motion carried unanimously. All those in favor? Hi. Uh -huh. Oh, we need a second. Is there a, is there a second? Sure. That was second. my second motion. Mm -hmm. that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item number four, and actually before I start with item number four, I've got one more thing that needs to be copied. Grant or Heather, can you just uh, copy this to the Is that the job description? Uh, just for everyone, yeah, it's the job description. Do you need the charge to be copied too? I, if, yes. Okay. Come <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, Grant. Um, item number four, the uh, facilities discussion, including UES playground project. That's you. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Thank you. So we wanted to give you guys an update and make a recommendation as to how we proceed. Great. Andrew LaRosa, Director of Facilities, or Facilities Director, I keep forgetting which goes first, but <laughs> Facilities Director, um, wanted to get you guys up to speed where we're stand. You can pass it along. Mm -hmm. The, as you know, the bids came back a couple, three, four weeks ago. Uh, engineering Construction, PCI, the apparent little better. We have been spending the playground committee, the design team, and the school administration has been working with ECI in looking for cost savings um, solutions. We did a first round, got down to about $1.6 million from the original $1.9 That was still not sufficient. Um, in looking at what was available, what was part of the bond, what funds were being brought in from other sources, what other obligations beyond <coughs> just the construction contract. 
construction administration, permitting fees, uh, oversight, which is coming down the pike. Um, it was discussed within the superintendent, and the business manager, and myself that a contract with ECI about $1.3 million would be palatable, would be where we ought to be. So we did a second round of cost savings uh, options. Throughout the whole process, our goal has been to keep the fundamentals of the playground and the features of the playground to intact. Looking more at finishes, looking at quantity, looking at options to sort of take an existing a design that we had. And sort of um, we got to the 1.6 and realized that we were not going to get down to 1.3. Uh, just by sort of reducing, taking granite blocks and turning them into concrete blocks. Or, so we needed to, to take a, a dramatic cut at, at the project to see if we can make that, get to that 1.3. The solution that we proposed was, what if we took the lower courtyard, the lower playground, did the soil remediation, and turned it back into, for now, a usable play area? put in a playable surface. <coughs> right now we're using sod as a placeholder, whether that's wood chips or sand, or we'll, we'll figure that out if that's the route we go. Um, the idea is that this would allow us to continue, get the project rolling, our windows starting to close up before those kids get there, allow us to get the project going, keep the features that are on the hillside, the really engineering intensive and earth moving intensive projects done, in the way the community expects them to be. A few tweaks from what the plan is, but the fundamentals of all the structures there. Um, and then looking to enhance the lower playground, the courtyard playground, with funds as they become available, either from fundraising opportunities, from fund balance that may be available to us, from continued uh, cost savings that we find within the project. Our goal is to not just stop when we get to that 1.3, but keep looking. If there's things that made sense to change in the project or take out of the project at 1.6, maybe they still make sense to change a little bit at 1.3 so that we can put that money immediately back into that play area. So our proposal is that you give us the authority to continue to negotiate and work with the playground committee and with the engineers and designers to come up with a contract not to exceed $1.3 million with DCI with the intent of returning the inner courtyard, taking the features in the inner courtyard, putting them to the side for, for a little while while we establish what we can put back into there with the intent as we move forward, we will get that, the playground to where the drawings have them now. Questions? Could I clarify sure. that when you talk about the courtyard, the, you're talking about right behind the building? The pre-K, K-1. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So last time around, I did ask if it was possible to know what was cut, because I thought the people in the community who've been working on this for a while would want to know sure. what isn't there. Is that Absolutely, possible? and that's we have uh, we've been working, as I say, through the engineers. So we're not just randomly just saying take this out, take that out. Um, but we have a lot of ideas out there, and a lot of things have been proposed. And our next, if we are charged with moving forward with this, our next meeting will be with the engineer, with the contractor, with the school, the uh, playground committee, and truly and document all together exactly what we've decided on and what we're staying in. So that will be a process that, quite honestly, we are we could do that because we have all the documentation, but it wouldn't mean anything. I think what the community really needs probably is a graphic, here's what it is and here's where we're going. Um, so absolutely, um, we, we want to do that. We need to do that because how these contractors estimate things and how they go through, it's, it's magic what they feel because they've got so many, we see one thing and they see six layers down, three layers wide. So. That will be the, that's part of that next step. We'll be going through all those cost savings ideas and balancing them. Other questions?
Thanks. So is your recommended that we approve the ECI bid? Uh, to, to negotiate to, negotiate. to a bid up not to exceed 1.3. So that would be first. the motion? Yeah. Uh, so I'll move that the board approve engineer's construction as the lowest responsible bid for the UAS playground project and approve the administration to negotiate a contract at a not to exceed amount of 1.3 million. That is second. Second. Discussion. Can I, can I for point of record, but I think it should be clear that the considerable reduction in work in the courtyard be part of that, just so okay. people know. Hey, could you just clarify the time frame again in terms of when we what ECI as of a couple of weeks ago was ready to mobilize at the end of this month. Um, they, like every other lady that's involved in construction, are getting jobs and so, but as they have not given us the guys you got another week or we're, we're putting our equipment out somewhere else, somewhere else. So, our, with this guidance from you guys, we will find that out tomorrow. That will be my first uh, okay. of business. So, we'll find out when they can With that change in what you're doing in the lower playground, will the lower playground be usable in the winter? That would be a, that would be a goal. I can't promise anything, but that would be a goal. Okay. Michelle? <clears throat> Today was the last day of the appeal period on the corrective action plan. Is that right? I do not know the answer to that, but it's certainly been out there for more than a while. A while. Days, yeah. Okay. So we're all set with DEC and. As I understand it. Okay. As I understand it, I, none of our environmental engineers or engineering. Engineers that are engineering consultants have said, Hey, we're getting back feedback here. So, was Jay and I actually had a little sit down today <laughs> impromptu to go through, not impromptu, sit down today to go through permitting and, and where we stand with all that. But as we. And that stuff you think is in line for this start? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, as we understand it. There's some question of one outstanding local one, but I, we think that that's. Take care. There, yeah. and, and you're at the cap, <clears throat> cap feedback close, and we haven't heard anything from Johnson Group so, or anybody, so we're, we're fine before that. Okay. 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 So, final question, which is mm -hmm. at least part of it for me. Uh, there was some talk kind of in the community about whether they could do the, the project in stages, and it sounds like the end result seems to be kind of to do it into sta stages, to do the upper playground as a stage and then the, you know, the lower playground part of the yard later. Why is that an option now and it seemed not to be an option earlier, or when it was a, not a preferred option earlier? Um, I can't speak to the, the process we got here. We've been sort of looking forward. But uh, I suspect that part of that phasing we really aren't so much phasing the environmental work. We're just phasing the finishes. Okay. Think of that way. We're okay. gonna get. That's we're gonna do the storm water. We're gonna get the dirt out of there. We're gonna have a nice clean site that we can then. And fortunately for the, for the courtyard playground, it's flat. It's level, and the structures that we're gonna be putting in there for the kids are not big, monstrous things that need big footings. We can get in there with hand equipment or small equipment to put that stuff in as we need. Whereas some of the stuff up on the hill. You need to pull Okay, no, that's that's a good explanation because I, I know that question is going to come. Yeah, no, we're going to do the environmental work and the, the stormwater work. Okay. Great. So ultimately, our approach will be to do it all as one project, but approaching the you know, the design and the, the equipment piece for the lower courtyard, so, you know, has sort of a secondary phase so that we can move forward with the contractor to get the project started. Okay. So that all can't little quite afford that playground. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It won't be forgotten. It won't be forgotten. No, no. And all that will be left to do is the equipment that will go on that playground. Equipment, <coughs> unless it is. We talked about the yeah. Yeah. The equipment, the foundations, the 18 inches of, of um, uh, wood chips. Wood chips that need to go underneath the play yeah. equipment, but you know, if it's but fundamentally yes. Okay. Is that metal play structure that's in that courtyard? going to be reused or is it going 
the current Jay's been working with some folks on. Playback yeah, so so I've been working with the um, parks department, and Alec from the parks department has been on the site all week with a group of volunteers that come through every year, and m the majority of structures have already been dismantled, um, and they're going to finish that up by the end of this week. Uh, I just. Meant, and, and so, and then I just be, meant, will that still be there for the little kids? It will not. Okay, will that not. was my it'll, question. It's been dismantled. It will, they will remove it all eventually, and it'll, they'll store it over in Hubbard Park and then look for reuse within the district. So, but no, that won't, that won't stay. Okay, so it'll be, it'll, it'll be a blank, <laughs> it'll be a blank. In the, in the, courtyard. the courtyard will essentially be a blank space. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah. We talked about that with Ryan. Parody, he had made a very good point of equipment that's there is meant for small kiddos, mm -hmm. and if you have, if we do use it as play space for all the kids, right. then there's a safety concern between big kids, little kids, that that kind of idea, which I thought was a pretty good point. So, and it's an added supervision that you don't necessarily need. Right. It, it gives us good short-term flexibility. Yeah. 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 Bridget. Um, this has less to do with the playground than with the next phase of the bond, but I'm not sure when else to raise it, so I'm going to raise it. The degree to which the cost of the playground seems to have been underestimated is raising concerns for me about the, the high school project that's in the bond and whether there are any lessons that we need to learn and how soon we need to learn them about the, um, the bidding on the high school project. Well, because so if we need more money for that project, I think we need to know during the budget process that we need it. Sure. Well, I was uh, fortunate enough to f work for the firm that's designing the, I work for Black River Design, so I've marginally familiar with the project of the locker rooms and the auditorium. And uh, I know that originally their cost estimate was based on conversations, real world conversations, and I know that as part of the process, we will be doing cost estimates through prior to bid. Um, so we will, at the end of schematic design, we will have a, a package that we will send to a professional cost estimator to go through and make sure that we make changes before the bid package is put together. We will also put in within the contract a couple of, I kind of like your, like the expression that Jay came up with, domino pushers. A couple of big pieces that when we get the contract in front of us, we can say, let's take that out, we'll figure it out later, but let's get, let's get the contract signed. So we'll have those certainly within us, but we will we will be doing at least one, possibly two cost estimates estimates on each of those projects. Great, thank you, Lisa. So you had said that um, the ECI had come to one point six million, or you all uh, the first round, yep. So does that mean that you can estimate that three hundred thousand will be the cost of the final? No, portion? no, because we continue because that that last three hundred thousand was not just the playground, that, or not just the courtyard. That was continued throughout the site, producing plants and changing materials. Um, so that was not we did that that last cost savings round two was not just the inner courtyard. It was throughout the entire project. Okay. Yeah, and and we discussed that Jay and I discussed that that we will very soon, just like documenting what those changes are. We do need to go back and look at how much those parts and pieces are going to be. So when funds hopefully become available, you can pick and choose. When we say, oh, we found $50,000 somewhere, what can we get with that? And where do we want to go with that? So that, that will Grant's be. Grant's so good at finding $50,000. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that, and, that, and that could be part of finding savings in the upper playground work. It could be, um, it could potentially be in raising funds that the committee is committed to do. It could come in a lot of different Places, but we're, we're very, you know, very cognizant of where we need to be to be able to move forward as a district comfortably with contract with ECI. Jay, do you want to come up? So, I mean, I think close to done, but absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> if we're not, we're going to play an idea. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> Happy to answer any questions. Yeah. How's it going with the neighborhood? It's going. It's going very well. Good. It's going very well. I've. Um, you know, there's a few f really small details that still need to be worked out around the closure of Park Avenue uh, ap application that's going to be with City Council, but we're pretty much 95% there, just a couple of small details that have just taken time as we're in summer, so that's that's going along really well. And I mean, our neighbors, we've been very proactive with engaging with folks in the neighborhood, and 
all of our response has been really positive. You know, good questions, but but positive about how do we make this work and, and move forward. Certainly with the city as well. Like when I was here at the last meeting, you know, the, the same continues. So that's going on. And how much pressure will this, if you can't have the courtyard space open for near recess and play time, how much pressure will that take off the streets? Because obviously it's a much smaller area than you know, the full two playgrounds, so there'll probably be some pressure to have more space. I think we'd have to leave, leave that up to the building administrators to really dice how much they need and how much they need to with. Yep. And how do they schedule recess? Yeah. You can be creative with schedules <coughs> to have a smaller amount of kids out there if you can figure out the way to supervise it. Yeah, yeah and I think, I think our approach, like I alluded to, it needs to be that this is one big project and it will be closed and we're gonna use Park Avenue as our outdoor space throughout the year, but we're gonna figure out how we're gonna make the budget piece work you know, throughout the construction process to be able to um, develop the lower courtyard to whatever it might look like. Yep. So it's, I don't think this is a step back in the sense that we're like, oh, now we're just phasing it. And there's upper and lower happening at two different times, but rather we're just, you know, Getting to a point where we can move forward with ECI and get the soil remediation done, get the the um, you know get everything started so we everything you know we're working with a real hard deadline for when the school starts in terms of safety and egress points and all of that around the school um, at the end of August. So we, you know we've got to you know get moving with ECI so that we're at that point and then look at how we can phase in the development of the lower playground and not see this and really as a two-step process, but just more as how it was more in, in terms of phases. And how is this going to integrate? Because I know the bond had some other UES projects. How is this going to integrate with those projects? I mean, there's the wiring, uh, and then yeah. you know, the elevator, and, and the vestibule is probably the most yeah. critical. Um, and that is, quite honestly, needs to be a discussion with ECI, so okay. we all designers and engineers, and we all have oh they should do it this way, and the contractors say no, we do it this way, and so we were have been talking as an example. We've been talking about how are we going to keep handicap accessibility to the back of a building? You know, we're going to have to build a scout, you know, or do a walkway and stay packed. And, and the contractors are well, we'll probably just leave that concrete and that asphalt until next year. It's like oh well, yeah, I guess we could do that. Not that that's exactly you know that's. That's an idea they have. Mm -hmm. Now that we, if we can get to this 1.3 with them, the integration of the two will be much smoother. Okay. Um, there still may be some challenges if they say, no, we don't want to dig that up, but because there's some roof drains and things like that that have to tie in. So there is, there's definitely some crossing there, but that's what these guys do for a living and they'll figure it out. Okay, great. Yeah. Other questions? All those in favor of Bridget's motion, which to remind folks is to uh, authorize the administration to negotiate with ECI for a contract not to exceed 1.3 million. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you so much for your work, Jay. And yeah. And the end Thanks, thank guys. you guys. Not done yet. <laughs> we know. We know. Yeah. Yeah. I should also acknowledge this is Libby's first yeah. board meeting. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Yeah. <laughs> got here 12 hours ago. We got time. <laughs> so great to have you here, and Andrew and Ryan and Mike we've got a whole new crew that started this week. So yeah, and they've been working very hard. Yes, very hard. Um. So next items is the board summer fall agenda uh, discussion. And first a couple of quick summer things. Uh, we are kind of borderline on quorum for the July 18th meeting. Um, Becky can't make it. I think we have Becky, Steve, Peter, and Ryan all can't make it. Can everyone else make it because if not we 
don't have a quorum okay. removal, and you can cancel. This is next week, right? Mm -hmm. This, this is, is next week. week. I just deleted it from my calendar today because I thought it couldn't be real. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I can be there. And then the second question is, uh, with a short bench, is there enough that we can get done, need to get done? I was. Well, the question is, what's on the agenda? Yeah, that's well. I think the question is, what, what should we put on the agenda? Uh, mm. Yeah, what what we kind of need to do is move some board business forward. Uh, yeah. Do we have more structure policies? Um, so what we could do is we could kind of use it as a time for a small group to talk about what the retreat should look like, um, and also, you know, a good number of the superintendent evaluation committee will be there, so we can talk a little more about that. So we could have a short meeting to do those two things. Um, How are we doing with policies? So I think uh, we're we, good yeah, on, the, on the mandatory policies. Yeah. Is that right? That looked like. I was yeah. looking at that. We'll go back to that. Yeah, I think. A few more so maybe would there be any more to approve next time? For example. I'm well, it could be. Them. We can't approve them because then we won't have enough time to warrant an approval. That's right. 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 Next we week, I forget. But we couldn't approve them. But there's a lot of other poli like board policies. I mean, there's no shortage of board policy things that right. we could discuss we could in a discuss. small group and try to, you know, right. make some movement on and not adopt, not adopt or decide anything, but just. It just seems like we never have enough time, so I. Exactly. <coughs> planning planning the retreat seems like a really good idea. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. You're going to be here, Jim. I'm going to be here. But, yeah. So I, I would say planning the retreat would be a good. Okay. Use of our time. Peter. When, when you say a short meeting, like are you thinking it's an hour? I mean, meetings are normally two hours, so you think like an hour meeting? I I, I think that's put two hours because that's our scheduled time. But I, yeah, yeah. unless we, we really want to talk retreat details, it's okay. probably something that we could easily do in two hours if that was. Okay, because the only thing I, if, when I heard short meeting, if you were thinking it was going to go an hour, in my mind it was, why well, we just start the next meeting at six, and we'll have four more mm -hmm. people, unless it's something time sensitive, none of which you really. Doesn't sound super time sensitive, but if you're thinking it's going to be a full two-hour meeting, then you know that's great. Plow through two hours of work, and I, I totally get that. But it seems like we do we have done a lot of six to nine meetings, as unpleasant as they are. But yeah. it does allow everyone to be part of the discussion, and um, if it's not time sensitive. But if you think a full two-hour meeting is necessary, then all for it. Um, second scheduling, August one. I cannot make it, and I know it's a difficult meeting for Libby because there's a retreat down in southern Vermont, uh, which I think also several other uh, members of the leadership team are going to be at. Pete and Steve, not uh, you. Pete and Steve, are you're going to be on top of Kilimanjaro. Nine meetings while we're gone. Fourteen, like way. nine school board meetings in the fourteen uh, days around the country. <laughs> uh, how would people feel about moving that to the following Wednesday, which is August the <coughs> I don't care if you move it, but I probably won't be here on the 8th. Okay. I think that's okay. Yeah, the 8th would work for me. I'm fine, either way. Okay. Lisa? Yeah, I can do that. Is Ryan back from? I think I think back he is back. Yeah, okay. Back. So let's, let's do that as well. Um, the final scheduling item. Um, we discussed, Livy and I discussed perhaps moving the regular time of this meeting up a bit. Mm -hmm. How do people feel about that? To either 6 or 6.30 with the idea of trying to go from either 6 to 8 or 6.30 to 8.30? I'd love to move it up. Yeah, would guess so. That'd be great. Uh, yeah. Totally in favor of that. Are you going to do that for the one on the 8th? Uh, no, we, we can, we can <laughs> make, 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 look on your face, we can not do it for the one on the 8th. But okay, but after uh, that, I'm fine. <laughs> okay. I think that can be really hard for people to get here at 6 from work. You mean like the public? Are you thinking every meeting starts at 6 or just? Or 6.30 to, I mean, I, I get this, I get I get it hard from six, but I think most people in Montpelier are going to come. Are probably going to be able to make six thirty. But and what about our Rob's board members? Is what Peter's thinking about? I know. Can you guys? Like, is that tough I, for you it's, guys? Ryan, it's okay for me, but I think that Ryan, far. it's yeah. a, it would be a challenge for him okay. with what? kids. Hand off and kids. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, let's um, let's confirm with Ryan. I'll I'll see if that works for him. Um, and if it if it does, consult with Peter. Well, I think that would have to. By the way, I think that would have to be like an action item to do. I think it would be an action item, yeah. Because we. We have reset a meeting. We'd have to be warned. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we'd have to. We're, I think it would have to be an official act. But yeah. So. So we have to talk about it again. I know there are many days that don't do it around me, but there are. You know, once the sports start for kids, there are many days I book it right from a kids' sport event to here. Yeah. And I'm not saying I can't miss some sporting event, but it does add, you know, another layer of stress. But that's okay. It's just something to be. You know, it, it'll be fine. Just, it's a little harder, but um, one of the nice things about starting at seven, though, I gotta say, by nine, we all want to be done. <laughs> right? No one is no one is sitting in this chair at eight fifty eight thinking, okay, I got another half an hour to go. Like people are, we are wrapping stuff up. Right. If we start at six, there's a danger we still go to nine. And and now, not that Jim isn't amazing at running meetings with his iron fist, and, but well, we often go to ten though. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. In the budget session, uh, we go to ten. Well, that, that's that's different. I think the budget stuff we could talk about moving that, but for regular meetings. Well, we did last year. We were doing budget meetings from six to ten all yeah. the time. Yeah. <laughs> that was rough. It was bad. Because uh, we had all those executive sessions. We had a lot of executive sessions. Yeah. 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 Like I would say, like almost every meeting. For a long time. Yeah. yeah. I know. I roll the sock over the dark place. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But seven is really late. Like I, I would vote. Okay. Not that we're voting to really consider at least six thirty because. I mean, okay. I'd be fine with six, but I know there are challenges either way. But boy, I yeah. feel like seven, we just lose all this time where I'm just like okay. killing time before the meeting starts, wow. and then. Or just working, or just That's end up working until seven. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think it sounds like people would like to push up a half. I'm only scrambling to get here. It's not and did you have a preference in your life? What makes it better for you? Like earlier, get better. Home for your the, kids. I don't know if you have like something with your husband and switching kids. Like you just rather get down here and get out. Yeah. Well, for you, it's like dead time. Uh, yeah, I've been okay. here since seven fifteen this morning, so okay. that's probably how I. I understand. Well, no, we <laughs> should be considerate of the staff. That should be an important part of our decision. Like we don't want to like burn out the staff because. Well, and it's also a little, you know. For instance, if you know, if you want to have a, a principal come and talk about yeah, something, yes, it's, that's right. You know, it's that's easier to have the staff. Okay. okay, good. Yeah. Okay. Um, so is the retreat going to be on the fifteenth? I think we should probably formalize it. Fifteen. I have not heard. Uh, does that work? I can for be you? there. Yes, I'm you sorry. Okay. Um, Steve didn't get a definite, definite, but he said it was the best of all the days. The only one that doesn't work for is Becky, but we can't get you and Libby at the same. That's okay. That works. So. Um, It'll be Libby's first retreat. <laughs> <laughs> and is this a board-only retreat? Board and superintendent. Board and superintendent, but not, it's not a uh, administrative well, team. Not with the whole leadership team. Yeah. And, and yeah. what was your time frame for this retreat? Yeah, I'm curious about uh, that. I'm okay. I was thinking at least half a day. Would people rather do 9 to 1 or like noon to 4 or 1 to 5? Would it replace the meeting that we have scheduled for 7 p.m.? No. Or? I think it would probably replace the meeting, yes. Okay. Because that's. Minor detail, but that one's the Roxbury meeting. So we have to reconfigure. Yeah, we, we can Post maybe do the, the Roxbury one. meeting the next meeting. So what um, days are we at Roxbury? Every, every fourth, fourth meeting. Every fourth. Every fourth. Okay, good enough. What about it? Would it be possible? I mean, I'm just asking. I mean, I can do whatever, but like even st we can start before nine too. Is that too early for folks? Like eight thirty, eight fifteen. I mean, I'm up. I'm up. That's uh, fine. Jim's giving me the look. Is that, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's summer and like, like camps and. Okay. Uh, that eight and nine hour can be. Okay. A juggle. I'm concerned that. Um, we can we can do it at eight. If, if you want to. Even eight thirty, just get me. Yeah. Okay. What? Well, I mean, usually kids drop off camp at eight eight thirty. Yeah. I don't know. Do that many kids going to camp. My kids and your kids. Becky no. Tina no. Too old. Too old. Too old. <laughs> no kids, right? Yeah, so your kids? 
I am not doing drop off. So. There you go. So, <laughs> I don't know, Jimmy. It would just give us more of the afternoon. It's just you, Jim. <laughs> so, is there any 1230? I don't want to be a pain. I mean, that's I'm concerned that um, eliminating that board meeting, we're not going to get done what we need to get done. It mm -hmm. seems like we have a lot done now. I appreciate to do. Now, I appreciate that we're going to set the retreat agenda next time. I'm just worried. But you have a better sense than I of what needs to be done. So if we can get it done that amount of time, great. I don't think it's enough time. Huh? Thank you. So <laughs> I, my understanding of the things we need to talk about are yeah, we talk about, yeah. the budget process, yeah. how we're going to adopt mission and values for the new district, yep. board and the board governance process. And there may be other board things. Conduct. And board conduct. Yeah, those are. That's three half that's, day discussions. That is right not there. a four hour discussion. Oh boy. Yeah. And, and, I'm and sorry, you know, it's just not. There are a lot of little things that uh, may seem a little, but for example, this is a Montpelier School emblem. Yes. It shouldn't be on the Montpelier Roxbury Public School document because it's never been discussed. Not that it won't be. But it's never been discussed. If Ryan well, were here, he'd be pointing that out. Well, you I'm know sure what, though, board Tina? Was. That just that little logo just appeared like two years ago, and the board didn't select it. It just—I don't even know where it came from. I'm just saying. I know Ryan <laughs> mentioned it once that it was thought of as being a Montpelier logo, and so it was worth a discussion. I'm thinking that. That might be part of our mission and values conversation. Might be. But Tina's um, point was a little different from yours, Bridget. I, th I believe, right? Because Tina, you're talking about regular board agenda, meet, like our regular meetings. Well, if you cut a meeting out at the end of the day and you've done a retreat, what was on the regular board agenda? And, and I don't even know how we're going to get done the things in the retreat. So I'm going way out here. Are you with me? Peter's got both feet on the floor. Suppose we met all day. I was thinking the same thing. But not at night. 8.30 to 4.30? With an hour break? What meeting did we cancel? Oh, we have enough I didn't think we canceled. Uh, there's, there's, there's one there's scheduled for that day. There's a meeting at that, uh, that night. Yeah. That's just a placeholder. Normally, just, just for what it's worth, normally we don't meet in the evening in July and August. We just have two retreats. And, and I would say not that this is meetings. not normal because it we is not normal because we have to set everything up. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So the things I have, I pretty much you know, governance and structure and board role, clarifying that, board conduct, uh, <coughs> setting up budget and general schedule, and then mission, vision, and at least establishing a process for that, if not, at least getting the mission and vision down, all of which are big topics. Big topics. I would go for, I, I think it's a full day's worth of work, then. unless yeah, people want to have two half day retreats. I, I, I was going to suggest, I, I personally, I think eight hours, of, I love you all, we do great work, this is super fun stuff, but eight hours is a long time to be locked in. I, I don't know, are we more productive if we did two? Is that easier for people to schedule them? So I, think it's, I think it's, I think it's, I think, I think, well, yes and no. Um, you might be more productive, but are you going to find two days that we can do this? That's what me. I'm thinking about. It was hard enough to come up with this one. Yeah, I, I'm thinking that. And sometimes, I don't know if you actually are productive when you get two days, because then you kind of have to do like the reset again. And sometimes if you're just locked okay. in a room for eight hours. Okay. You get to a point where you just start making decisions, and mm -hmm. okay, that's true. All right, we could have a stationary bicycle that we can take turns yeah. on or something. And we can we can have like a meaningful <laughs> lunch where we actually just you know unplug a little. Trot bit. outside and okay. unplug for an hour and chat, um, and kind of yeah. have like two you know two working yeah. things with a meaningful break in between. Well, I think we should do the full eight hour day and grind this out. I mean, we're merging, we have a new superintendent, you know, we owe it to the district to really yeah. be on top of this because at least if something goes sideways, we can say we looked at everything and like get a, get ahead of this as much as we can. 
So I would support that full eight hour day then. Yeah, and we can, you know, use the time of the eighth and the eighteenth to you know, set the table and make sure it's as productive as we can. Make sure it's as productive as possible. Yeah. So we're good with that? So so this is what I think I heard. We are going to go. A full day, which is 8.30 to 4.30, is that what you said? Yes, 8.30 to 4.30. But we are not having a school board meeting that evening. Yes, I think that would be overkill. <laughs> yes, I know, but I'm just <laughs> <do> clarifying. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. We're going to have a full day retreat on the 15th. Um, so we'll have uh, one school board member meeting in August, which will be on the 8th. Yes. Okay. And just to be clear, because it's a public, we're in a public okay. session, the 15th is a school board meeting, and it's a public meeting. Yeah. Right, so right. We can it's do business there yeah. as long as it's warned. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so just if we have yeah, consent agenda items, or yeah, we can yeah. spend a few minutes yeah, crossing those and those. I think someone raised a concern that calling it a retreat suggests that the public can't attend. Not in a meeting, but which is not true. Yeah. It's just sig it just signals that we're trying to focus our time yeah. as a group, not that it's not a public meeting. Okay. And Libby and I discussed getting a facilitator for it. <coughs> I'm, I'm on it. You're on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. As I think a facilitator will help. Really? Huh? We've had such <laughs> bad luck with our facility. I, I mean, does anyone else feel that? Way? Not that we've had bad luck, just that I don't, I feel like we know what we need to do. Yeah. I, I feel like we know what we need to do. And sometimes when you have a facilitator, you, the agenda gets crossed with, because there's not enough communication with the facilitator. So you end up like pulling out rolls of toilet paper and tell something I have complete confidence. I have complete confidence in Jim's ability to facilitate <laughs> oh. <laughs> the meeting, as you normally do. I've been a facilitator not for the entire meeting, but for the talking about board conduct and board roles and responsibilities, superintendent roles and responsibilities, having somebody facilitate that discussion. Well, that just that part of it. I mean, we, but we, we, kind of we had this, that yeah. facilitated discussion, which was good. But I mean, I, I feel mm -hmm. like we're trying to move beyond the discussion and just hash out some policies, get them in place. I think, I don't know. I, could, I can't comment until we've had the discussion of what's on the agenda and what protocols you might use to pull off the agenda. And um, if that's working well, we have not sometimes had good luck with our facilitators. So that doesn't mean there aren't good ones out there, but if if I had a better idea of it, that would I mean I'd know whether I'm with you know the woman the not. woman who helped us with the budget process, she, I think she did a good job. Yeah, I was actually going to ask. We're sort of bleeding between the, the yeah. logistics and the agenda planning. If if we have those materials that she prepared for us, That's, to make sure we yeah. have those next week because they were really helpful. Because we did good work. We did that, good work about you, the budget there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you have them, Michelle? Still, I and you would. I so should. why don't we? I can't find them. Um, Libby can still work on it, but that next, the, our next meeting when we talk about the agenda, then we make a decision. On yeah, because I think where it'd be most helpful is to have someone who can, you know, come in with some kind of like standard board roles and responsibilities, and come in with maybe, and, and even like a few exercises, like that exercise the that you had when you went to the, uh, the merger training mm -hmm. thing, which I don't know the, the name of that, but where you just kind of had people sit down and say, well, is this something the superintendent does or the board does? Right. And, and then really get a sense of, you know, where people are on roles and responsibilities. I, I think we could use at least some guidance and some materials on that. Because I think if we come in, certainly we lie on me or, you know, <laughs> we're going to be set back on that, but um, if we can get someone who can come in with like prepared materials and be really focused and ready to hit the ground running and kind of like 
skip the fluffy stuff and the uh, or maybe someone could work with us beforehand and, and maybe not. I think if you gave us, um, if you set us up with some homework to read some of the VSBA materials, because I think they lay yeah. out pretty clearly those, you know, at least their their take on those roles and responsibilities. Yeah, and, and we did the. So you did the sample ones with Steve. We probably still have those too. Yeah, yeah. A, so we've got you know, that we could stuff. go back to those. We have. I those. thought we did a good job on those too. I felt like yeah. everybody was pretty yeah. much on the same page on the answers to those scenarios. Yeah, so I think going back and pulling in some of that stuff, and because um, I actually think, I actually think we're on on some of these issues. If we do homework beforehand and we get stuff beforehand and people refresh their you memories beforehand, I, I think we can actually get through some of this stuff more quickly than it Another suggestion I'll throw out that we could talk about more next week is that um, board members could split up responsibility for facilitating different sections of the retreat, which would pull in, take some work off of you, pull in more board members to have done the homework and you know be ready to talk about different issues and then also means we don't have to listen to the same person the whole day. <laughs> okay. Although when we all don't like the facilitator it at least unites us. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have a focus and prefer facilitator, which so would be worthwhile, but I, I think a lot of it is going to be coming in. Yeah. Right and so the governance piece includes the work plan, right? The work plan for the coming year. So I think that's most of what I have on. Um, On summer fall agenda, so I think it's going to be a busier summer than usual. But um, we've got a lot to do. Anything else on that before we move on to policy readings? Yeah, perfect. Um, Item number seven, uh, which is the second reading of the city self-expression uh, policy was in the packet. Uh, any discussion, comments on, on that? Um, I was supposed to do some more work on this. Didn't have time to do very much more work. But what I did has leads me to suggest that we should bring it back on the agenda next week. Because I did look at the statute and compare them, and there are things in the statute, not in the policy. And I'm not really sure why. But one of the things that's in the statute that's not in the policy says that notwithstanding one to six, that students can be taught like standard English skills, you know, English language skills. I'm paraphrasing. I, I had a bunch of stuff that I printed out and forgot to bring, which is not helpful. But anyway, um, so that that's in the statute but not in the policy, which suggests that there's a little bit more um, supervisory authority in the teacher than the policy has. I don't understand what you're saying. So okay. So what I'm saying is that there's a statute. There's a statute that I, I sets out most of this. Match the statute, but what's they don't quite statute? match. There, and one of the provisions that's in the statute that's not in a policy is a is a provision that says basically, notwithstanding one through six, which sounds like it's an exhaustive limit of what the school can regulate, that um, students may also be instructed in the English language, basically, like you know, grammar. Writing skills. Students can be instructed in English writing skills as part of journalism. And I don't know why that got dropped from the policy. Do you see what I mean? It, it would suggest that there could be some role in faculty editing of student-sponsored media for that purpose. 
but that's not in the policy, although it's in the statute. Okay. So I'd like to follow up the VSBA and find out why they decided not to put that in the standard policy when it was in the statute. So you're going to check on it and we'll bring it back? Unless people very much want to vote on it. Okay. I don't feel that strongly about it, but I did want to report back. <clears throat> so to get it right, then have to go back and change it or fix it? Yeah. 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 Plus, we can't adopt it next week anyway, so. This reflects what we discussed at the last meeting. And I was just curious, is mandatory attendance and truancy highlighted for some reason? Because it's a change. change. Because added. it's a change. That's what I thought. Yeah. We added the September 1 cutoff. Right. Right. Yes. We added the September Be warned. Should be warned for acceptance. Yeah. So I just want to say that I edited this properly and printed it off and left it on the printer. So <laughs> that's yes. why you have, I will circulate the proper one. But fortunately, the, the edit is old school. <laughs> this is old school. I'm yeah. sorry, but I walked out without getting anything off the printer. Um, <clears throat> so folks, yeah. <laughs> most of us, I think, have, have, were part of the editing here, but. If, uh, Shelby, if you want to take a little bit of time to read through this quickly mm -hmm. and see if you have any questions. Um, it's been rewritten a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> well, are we going to approve this? Are Tonight? We, are we doing anything like well, we can, Is that the idea? Uh, we can approve it next week if you guys want more time to review it, or we can approve it tonight. I, I mean, it's just hard to read this longer document. Like, I mean, minutes. we can take like a 10 minute break, or it just seems weird. Like, well, I'll sit here while I try to. But to really yeah. give a thoughtful response. I mean, I don't mind all our time. Everyone. Should we, even if we don't approve it, should we take a break and let people? I don't want to waste everyone's time while I read, though. Well, I don't, me too. I haven't read it. We didn't get it. No, it's both. <laughs> so why don't we just yeah. do and this I next want time. to suggest that on this, that right? I'm not sure how to do this as a place, <clears throat> but on the 
call maybe five bucks. Job description. We have a mission and values that are not the mission and values of this board. Yes. And so I'm cu curious of do we just leave those headers and take them out? Do we, what is it we do? It says in here that these are just placeholders until they're updated. So, so I mean, yeah. that's work to be done. And the job description actually is intended to be updated on an annual basis. It's not a static document, it's a living right. document. So, um, I mean, we could improve it, approve it today or next week. And six months later, after the first evaluation, it might have to be updated again anyway. So I'm not sure how that works for the board of directors in terms of approving the document. I don't know. Well, I wondered if we should just take out mission and vision at this time with the rest of the job description and then add whatever we decide on. Mm -hmm. You can do that. I don't know the process. I, there you you know, usually you have a mission and vision. So we can do we can do one of a couple of things. We can either we're way ahead of schedule. This is the last item on the agenda. It's, it's eight. Um, uh, <laughs> we can either take five ten minutes now, have people review it, and come okay. back and just edit it and get it done. Uh, we could delay it for another meeting, which I would love to have time to read it right now since I'm sitting here with it okay. and it's only eight o'clock. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's take okay. a ten minute. Viewer break and yeah. Under objectives, yep. the second bullet. Um, it says the each individual student, and again in the third bullet it refers to each individual student, and it, later in the document it refers to all students. And personally, I'd rather we refer to all students than each individual student. Because I so think in this district, so what we've had students. to weigh individuals against the whole, we put the weight on the whole. Um, I mean, of course, we want the best for each individual student, but I think the superintendent's responsibility is to the district as a well. whole. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then with a complete, valuable, meaningful, and personally rewarding education, that seems like our values are mission, and seems like this committee probably, I mean, those are all lovely sentiments, but it doesn't seem like this committee should be choosing those. Where are you? I'm sorry, I don't know. I'm still in the second bullet. The second bullet. Completed. So that all students oh, enrolled in the district provided with a complete, valuable, meaningful, I don't really know what this means, but I think whatever it means, it's really referring to the values or mission. I mean, I guess if you guys came up with it and thought it was meaningful. Uh, could we change it to we provide it with a rewarding education? An education, education, an education that, consistent with our values? Cons or consistent mm -hmm. with our mission, vision, and ends? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rewarding education consistent. So because otherwise I just don't think those are very they're meaningful. just kind of happy words. Okay. Can do that. Yeah. Consistent with our mission and vision or mission values. Values and mission. And mission. Mm -hmm. Our mission and, and values. Mission and values, yeah. Do that. Does that make sense? Yeah, our ends well, were we don't know more if we're specific to what we wanted for students. But they're not listed here. But we don't know. Yeah, I would say mission any. and values because I think our ends are going to flow from those. Okay, mission and values. Then. If we have ends. Okay. Thank you. Um, on the second page, this CIP talks about increasing student learning and assesses student performance, and it seems like the CIP addresses topics other than just student outcomes but I don't know whether it addresses them only in order, whether that's always the ultimate objective. But we are only referring to student outcomes in the CIP bullet. The CIP as written now under ESSA for federal funding has to have, it's based around student goals. Okay. So, so that's appropriate then. Yeah, it would make sense based on what 
the stipulations we have to live under if you're referring to the CIP as, yeah. as we know it. Yep. Um, under partnerships, the second bullet, um, the superintendent assists the board and administration in complying with legislative changes. And I would just say complying with or responding to. I'm sorry, assist the board and the administration. In complying with or responding to legislative changes. We're not always happy to comply. In complying and responding to. Okay. And the last bullet in that section has the. Um, sort of defines the role of the superintendent as uh, attending meetings, prepared to act as a resource and an advisor. Uh, earlier in here, we've said that they need to be articulating the vision of the district and our board meetings an opportunity for the superintendent to articulate that vision or are they really just staff support in that context? I, that again? I'm sorry, I, didn't understand. I know that was a little that was often that has often been tricky for past superintendents to know whether they're here supporting us as leaders or whether they are also supposed to be leading like who's in front in this meeting can be a little tricky oh. and I don't know if we have anything to say about that but. I I I view this as the board meeting with the superintendent providing the staffing for the board meeting rather than this being the superintendent slash board meeting. I mean, you know, clearly, you know, the superintendent of all forums, I think, should be, you know, articulating the vision and, you know, responding consistently with that. But I don't see this as a, I don't see board meetings as the platform for that to happen. That makes sense. I guess I don't see this bullet as summarizing what the superintendent does at board meetings, but as specifying one aspect of what the yeah. superintendent does at board meetings. And it's in terms of developing partnership with the right. board. So right. So that's one aspect of what the superintendent has mm -hmm. to do at board meetings, which is to be prepared to be a resource to help develop the agenda, which, you know, be able to answer questions, help us figure out how to make decisions. But I think other. I mean, all of the other, nearly all of the other bullets could also be part of the role of the superintendent at board meetings, including, for example, during the budget session, articulating the district's yeah. vision and values and integrating that with the budget presentation. So I, I think I'm okay with it as it is, but I, that, that's how I read it. I think I had one more. Uh, under personnel, the last bullet on that same page says that conducts supervision and evaluation for principals and district office leaders. And that, so we have had, um, for the past several years, we've referred to a group of um, administrators as the leadership team. That was a mm -hmm construct that Brian created somewhat arbitrarily and even the people who were referred to that way weren't sure who the full cast of those characters was. And so I think it would be great to define, and you, you probably know this already, who the superintendent's direct reports are and for us to know and for there to be a list, <laughs> you know, it's the curriculum and technology, the special services, uh, the three principals, the business manager, but then there's f four principals now, yes. Business manager, food service director, facilities director, yeah? Because those three have not always been in that crew. So maybe we should list um, them. So I, of that, that's what I'm suggesting. Instead of saying district office leaders, list right. who they are. Okay. So everybody would know. And the superintendent directly reports. supervises the food service director? 
has not always been the case, but seems like it should be. Well, who, who else would? would? Who? Good question. Yeah. I just they, they've it. sort of Never been a solo operator. <laughs> <laughs> That's been the problem. is a good thing. I, am <laughs> for clarity. No, I, I have to say, titles if and list them out. Though. Yeah, I mean, do, right. do I know that, or just want to say direct reports because yeah, the direct reports change. It could change. Because I think, uh, yeah, I think the point of this We're bullet is to make sure that the, the the individuals who are directly supervised by the, the mm -hmm. superintendent okay. get. It's an annual evaluation from the superintendent. <laughs> and the assistant principals, are they supervised by the principals? Yeah. yeah. I mean, and Heather and Tracy, are they supervised by you? Yeah. So, so maybe even though this says direct reports, sometimes the board might get a list of who the direct reports are. So we're happy to give you a list. Yeah. Okay. That, that would yeah. solve the problem, and it doesn't have to be in here. So if it changes. Um, we know. Okay. Thank you. Oftentimes, no one. How about so attended to principals and other direct reports? Not a good idea. <laughs> yep. <Yeah>, there you go. <laughs> all right. That's all I had to say. Mm -hmm. um, and under qualifications, I don't think master's degree needs two apostrophes. For sure. That's extra. I have two of them. Maybe that just can signify that. <laughs> there you go. I have three things. <laughs> Um, I don't feel incredibly strong about all of them, but under position objectives, the superintendent will be the educational leader to the Montpelier Roxbury community. That could be a lot of things to a lot of people, first page. And I think, if, I don't know if it's worth fleshing that and saying the superintendent, as educational leader to them, of the Montpelier Roxbury community, will be responsible for articulating board policy to the public, interacting with the media, settling conflict, just so. It's clear that this is the person where the buck stops with the community, right? We don't do that stuff. We do not settle conflicts when people are upset. Um, we don't. We don't. We don't do any of that. So it's just. I don't know if we need to say. It. I mean, educational leaders in broad. But if everyone's happy with it, I'm okay with it too. I think educational leader is more about the leader of the teachers. Is uh, that? Am I off on that? The, well, it says educational leader to the Montpelier Roxbury community. community. Yeah. I think it's I, more than that. Yeah, I, I saw that bullet as less about what you're talking about, which I think is covered by other bullets, and more about expecting the superintendent to have a, a leadership voice on education issues in the community. Whereas, like running the district is covered by the first three bullets. I don't know. If that, I don't know if that's quite what you're getting at, but As, if folks but maybe are happy, what you're talking about isn't one of the. That's right. Isn't included in the bullets. If and folks I, feel yeah. it is, though, that's okay. I don't think it is. I mean, maybe it doesn't need to be, but it is what we ask the superintendent to do, right? Like an example would be. The end, when the serious summit thing was going down at the end of the day, that was the superintendent's job to figure out how to resolve that and articulate to the community, mm -hmm. this is our plan, this is why we do it, this is our plan. And I don't know if we need to put that in writing. Maybe it's obvious. I, I don't want to waste that time. We could use a fifth bullet, potentially. I would agree on the superintendent being... The outward-facing role. The ultimate decision maker where... I don't know how to describe it because it's for things to, that have been delegated to the superintendent. Well, we described the, and this is the second bullet under responsibilities, as the chief executive officer. So what I'm hearing from That's both of you is meaning. that it's not enough in some way. It can be fine. I no. mean, if, if I mean, well, I could ask we, Libby, do you feel like you would need more words there to help you do your job? I think what you're saying, Peter, I hear what you're saying, and I think that helps define the board's responsibilities to the community more than a job, a piece of the job description, okay. but I can understand why it would go into the job description as, as another place for you all, if you're asked to conflict, do a conflict resolution to say, that's the responsibility of the superintendent, look, here's our Here's our right. piece that we've agreed on. Right. So I think it's worthwhile to find. I was just reading through other bullets to see if it fits in other places, and it's not quite as strongly worded as what how you were wording it, or not quite as clear. Could you say again what you said, Peter? Um, I mean, 
superintendent as the educational leader to the Montpelier Roxbury community will be responsible for articulating board policy to the public, the media, and settling and resolving conflicts. I mean, that last part's a little clunky, but you know, just so they understand, like, this is our person that has to do, has to, has to do these things. Stuff. And right. the policy piece is in the Board of, Commun board of Commissioners policy under the third mm -hmm. bullet. Um, however, the, the more conflict resolution thing is in it in places like interpersonal and collaborative skills, but it's soft. It's not quite as direct as what you said. Wait, where, where's, the, where's the policy PC? And you if you look in Board of Commissioners on the third page, policy. Board of Commissioners, yep, which bullet? The third one, ensures staff and community awareness are, of all existing and proposed policies and ensures procedures are created and implemented. Yep. Okay. Um, however, the the kind of buck stops here conflict resolution piece yeah. that with the community or yeah. members of the community that's not okay. That's soft in here and under interpersonal and collaborative skills, conflict resolution is there. But I don't know if it Again, means if, what we went. If this makes things murkier, I'm not falling on my sword over this. But if you feel it, it doesn't. If it doesn't help, let's not do it. I don't think it hurts. So I don't think it hurts. I think it, unless I don't want that to be an exclusive list. Though. Okay. Well, that's. Yeah, I would like to say, among other things. Of course. But then it would hurt if it was seen as an exclusive list. If we had yeah. everything. So think about it. I don't know. It might be a better place. Might be for or another place rather not better. But another place would be when we talk about board responsibilities versus superintendent mm -hmm. responsibilities. So it is down okay. in some sort of. Formal paper. It's formalized in some way. Because um, we, but we, when we work it out there, we might think to then bring it over here. Because I think we do have some language. It, Montpelier had some language about delegation of authority to this. We should find. Um, my second of three is on the third page under Board of Commissioners policy. Um, one of the things that happened with the previous superintendent, I think many of us felt, was we did not get timely responses to information we requested at board meetings. And um, not to be, if this is too micromanage, yeah, I, we don't have to do it, but is there something in there that we articulate that, you know, the board as the supervisor of the superintendent, we, should, we, we need to get timely answers, right? I mean, there's one. That was in that was in communication and support to the board. We had the whole policy about right, and mm -hmm. and again, you know, in my mind, it can be through. something like, I simply can't do that. I need two weeks. But many times we said, oh, I'll get it to you, and then there was, and then nothing happened. And the bond was a big example of the early first iteration of the bond. So I don't want to. I don't know if we need to do that, but you know, some reflection that as you know when we need information to make a decision it has to be delivered in a timely way is that too much that too provides much? timely responses to board thank requests. you just so is a box yeah. thank you yeah. and then the last one um which should I always go through the responses board chair. to board requests. <laughs> yeah. okay. so, um and then my last one is under fiscal planning and budget management one of the biggest challenges i think we would agree to doing a budget is our very compressed time frame between the time when we get rates and numbers to we have to ship it off to the city council and get it printed i mean there is not a lot of margin for error every year right. it's incredibly stressful and it's important that the superintendent create a timeline for meetings and getting information out and then adhere to it yeah because things get sideways real quick and we don't have a lot of wiggle room and i don't know if it's worth putting that out didn't we last year at our So retreat? none of these bullets specifically um, say that. I mean, it, it, it says ensures right, the planning and management. We could just have a bullet that says creates the budget calendar. Exactly, and adheres to it. Because didn't we create a whole separate budgeting and fiscal responsibility policy after last year's retreat? We've got a whole document on what that is with the schedule mm -hmm. yeah. but Brian usually does a really detailed schedule of exactly you know from October through January she you want to develop the timeline for implementation or something I think the superintendent should yeah. be presenting that to the board so for example we as the board can make sure that there's enough there's enough 
public meetings that we feel meet the needs of the community in that timeline ahead right. of time. Mm -hmm. Right. Like if there's only two, that might be bad. If it's a contentious year, we might need four. So we should, okay. ultimately we're respond we're accountable to the public on it. That's it. So so but part of what we're saying Jim, though is that Jim time could find that from last year and get that to Libby because that needs to calendar. the budget calendar. Because it Do probably you know it was pretty she might she yeah. might have a different so, idea for the budget calendar. Well, that's yeah, but it's but, always yeah. helpful to have a starting. Right. Just right. Right. Say. <laughs> and and I think to Peter's point, if it's if we have it early enough, then we can be thinking if it comes to us at the last minute we're six steps back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to everyone who did so much hard work to that together. That's, yeah. that's impressive. Detail. Thank you very much. Thank you, Becky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Are there any comments on the chart? Are we no doing the chart? That's cool. Too? We have the chart we actually have to adopt at some point. I guess yeah. we have to adopt those. Yeah. But we did not do them tonight, but we do actually have to charge the committee yeah. with something. We could do it next week, and, but this would be Peter's chance to weigh in if you don't like it. I have no problems with that. Okay. <clears throat> I move to approve this charge. Second. 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 Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Should we approve the job um, description as amended, or do we we'll want to push that to a? Do you want another reading? I'm, I'm going to ask what you're going to do about the mission of it. <laughs> well, I mean, we're not going to have that until late summer, so I think we can. No, no, I know, but are you leaving the one, oh. the Montpelier one in here? I'm going to 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 delete it. I can tell you okay. in that just handbook, when I was rewriting the district wide handbook, that piece, I took that out and said this is to be determined by the newly merged board. Can we just put so it in why TBD? can't we do the same thing? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah let's yeah. put it in TBD. Making that amendment, I would make a motion to accept the job as amended. As amended. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Um, motion to adjourn. Do you want me to start with the website? Oh, yes, sorry. Um, yes. Website. It's finished. <laughs> it, it did finish. Um, that was a surprise on day one for myself and Mike Berry. Um, <laughs> He's been working tirelessly on this, and I just got a text. I brought my cell phone in here to check, but I just got a text from him today that the home page will be up by tomorrow yeah. of the new website. Yes. <laughs> the man is brilliant, and if you ever see him, pat him on the back. He's made this happen. He's made a lot of work happen in two days' time. Um, we will not have school pages yet, but the home page will be able to put school calendar. We'll be able to put latest news on construction and activities and things that are of immediate things concern. things on the page. Yeah. Whoa, so I'm excited. The high school guidance site to there, because kids are working on their college stuff over the summer. Oh, OK. That's a good thing to, to I'll text him and, and say that's important to yeah. get up there. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll, we, it's not going to be fully ready to go by tomorrow, but we should be some, the that's public awesome. will be able to see us by tomorrow. The other thing, to, so you're aware, is that Mike has put up um, Montpelier Roxbury Public Schools social media accounts. So follow us on Twitter. Tell everybody we're at M MRPSVT for Twitter. And he's also got an Instagram account for us and a Facebook account for us. So once Great. those are really rocking and rolling, um, I encourage all of you to share that and make sure mm -hmm. that people out there are seeing what we're doing. It's like it's the 21st century. Right. And, we'll, awesome. and will on our new website, you be able to use an iPad to access it? 
I would, I would make the assumption, yes. <laughs> don't we'll make that assumption. Oh, we have not been able to do that on this You website. do not know Mr. Michael Bear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they will be roving social media feeds on it. There will be calendars parents can, can attach themselves to so they see things in the school. They'll be, they'll be able to go through the, uh, social, the website to get weekly updates from schools and the district. And, I would also like the minutes to show that Libby's first meeting ended 25 minutes early. So the new regime is off to a fun time. Well, it hasn't ended yet. <laughs> Good point. Adjourn. Adjourn. Second. 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 Second.